Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use Mongoose and MongoDB with Node.js and TypeScript. If you haven't followed my previous videos on a Node.js TypeScript API in 2024, this video will be unique to you as we use decorators to define our routes and to do all sorts of cool things, including data validation and the altering of our functions before they're actually called. So if you want to learn how to do it the decorator way, I suggest you take a look at the other videos linked below so you can have a base to this project. But if you just want to start off from the same point that I am in the video here, I have the base project available for you inside of GitHub as well as the finished project so you can follow along with me as I code. That being said, if you want to use your own project, the prerequisite for decorators is to have your functions defined inside of classes and those classes is what serves all of your routes. You can define them any way you want as long as the function itself is something you can stick a decorator on. But if you aren't doing it that way and you're defining them with uh, your, your router.get and your router.post, all you have to do is insert the piece of middleware before the end of your function call. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, guys, let's get into it. The very first thing I'm going to do inside this project here is add Mongoose. So I'm going to run an npm install Mongoose. Mongoose is the Node.js library that we use to communicate with our MongoDB. As far as our MongoDB goes, I have one set up at the MongoDB website. You may recognize it as Mongo Atlas. Just Google it. It's very easy to set up a free database that gives you up to 500 megabytes for free. The next thing I'm going to do is add some basic configuration for my Mongo connection. I'm using .env to load environment variables and to load .env files from the root folder of my project. You don't have to do this. You could just define your variables in the config file, but I like to put them in a .env so that they're protected and I don't have to push it to GitHub. Let's insert some variables. I'm going to export a const Mongo user, Mongo password, Mongo URL, Mongo database, like I am doing with the other variables that you see here by making them equal to the process.env and then the variable name or making them an empty string as the default. And then I'm gonna have some Mongo options at the bottom that I'm gonna declare the type as a uh, mongoose.connect options and insert my connection options here. These might be different for you depending on the Mongo database that you're using, but mine is just the retry writes and the W, and that's all I'm going to put inside there for now. Again, any connection options that you would usually pass in the connection string, you can actually put in here as well. Once you've filled out all these variables, export another const Mongo object and then just pass in the five variables you defined here, and this will be your Mongo configuration object. And then finally, what you're going to do is you're going to add a Mongo connection. And then here you're going to insert your connection string. I'm just going to build mine from scratch, but you're going to replace the variables inside like the username and the password, the database that you're connecting to, the URL, everything here, you're going to insert as variables so that the Mongo connection is created from the other variables that you have defined. The only one you're not going to be using inside this connection is the options. We're going to use that in the actual mongoose connect function. Once you have all your variables filled out here, go to your .env file and actually insert your Mongo variables here that you want to define and keep a secret. Once you fill out all your variables, that being the user, the password, the URL, and the database, meet me back inside the project. Go to your server.ts file or whatever your main file is inside of your project, and we're going to import Mongoose at the top using import Mongoose from Mongoose. Next, what we're going to do is actually connect to Mongoose inside of this file. So I'm going to put it after I initialize express, I'm going to put my connect to Mongo here, make sure your function is asynchronous and then throw in a try catch block here inside of the catch block. I'm just going to log the error in case I can't connect to Mongo. And I'm just going to paste in some of my logging here. You'll notice that I'm using logging.log and not console.log. And that's because this project has its own logging library defined. Just use console.log here or console.error in your project, unless you have your own logging library defined as well. If we're unable to connect to Mongo, just log the error so we can see what happened. But we, you can shut the server off here if you want, but I'm just going to let it run just in case. Inside of the try block, I'm going to do a const connection is equal to await mongoose.connect. I'm going to pass in my mongo.connection because that's the URL I need or my connection string. And then I'm going to pass in my mongo.mongo options. And then this is where we actually pass in our options. Next, I'm going to do some more logging. And I'm going to say, if we're connected to Mongo, just display my connection dot version or some variable from the actual Mongo connection object. You can display anything you want, but I'm just going to put the version to make sure that we connected and this object is defined. And let's briefly actually start our project to see if we connect to Mongo. And after I run my nodemon here, you can see that I actually have connected to Mongo and it displays the version here. If you're having connection problems, make sure that your MongoDB is whitelisted and make sure that if you can't get it to connect, that you look at any of the documentation that your Mongo provider has available for you. 
So now that we've connected to Mongo, it's time to define how our project is going to interact with it. Our decorators or middleware, depending on which case that you're using, is going to be generic Mongo functions. So creating a model in Mongoose, saving a model, querying, anything you want to do interacting with a Mongoose model, you're going to be doing with a generic function. That way we only have to write it one time and it works across the board as long as we're using data validation. In this example, I'm going to be creating a book schema. All the book is going to contain is just a title and an author, maybe some timestamps. But I'm going to show you how it works with this generic implementation of our functions that interact with the model. Let's create a folder called models. Inside of it, create a file called book.ts. And this is where we're going to define our book schema. At the top, import mongoose and schema from mongoose. Then you're going to export a const book schema. This is going to be equal to a new schema. Inside of it, we're going to open up with an object that contains a title and an author. And we're going to provide our mongoose definitions. The title is going to be of type string, required set to true, and unique set to true, which means that there can only be one of that title in the collection. Author is going to be a type string as well, and required true as well. But it's not going to be unique as an author can have multiple books inside of the database. Add a comma after this object, and then this is where you can pass in some options for your schema. Here you can just maybe add timestamps are equal to true as an example. At the bottom, export a const book and make that equal to mongoose.model. Inside of it, put in book as a string with a capital B. This is going to be the name of your collection and then comma your book schema. And this is all you need to do to define a mongoose model. This is a very basic model. There's no pre or post functions. There's nothing crazy happening here. Just a basic example to show you how to get it working with your decorators or your middleware. Next, inside of your controllers folder, we're going to add our book.ts file. I'm going to copy it from our main.ts file. And this is where we're going to define our books controller class. We're going to have six routes inside of our books controller. And you can see the routes I already have defined for the main controller. They're going to be similar to this. And again, if you want to learn how to do this, please check out the links in the description below. If not, you just want to follow along, no problem. We're going to create six functions as I mentioned before a get all function, a get function, a create function, an update function, a query function, and a delete function. The get all function is going to be a get route and the URL is going to be get slash all. Make sure at the top your controller is defined as forward slash books. The get function is going to be a get slash colon ID. The create function is going to be a post route. That's just forward slash create. The query route is also going to be a post, also a forward slash query. The update function is going to be a patch, and that's going to be update slash colon ID. And then delete is going to be forward slash delete colon ID, just as I have them defined here. Make sure you have all the appropriate slashes and just make sure all of the functions just return 200 with empty JSON for now, because we have to define some other things before we fill these out. The decorators we create for Mongo are going to go underneath the route decorators. So you can see how putting everything inside of decorators will actually make your code very clean when it comes to TypeScript. The one last thing we're going to do before we define our decorators is to find a new piece of middleware and we're going to call this our declare handler. What the purpose of this is, is to inject a couple new variables for us to work with so that we can access the information we get from MongoDB directly from our request object. I'm going to copy my course handler I already have here and erase everything inside of it except for the next function and rename it. Then at the top, I'm going to import the document from Mongoose. And the reason that I'm going to do this is because some of the things I'm returning from Mongo are going to be documents or arrays of documents. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to declare a global and then we're inside of it. We're going to declare our namespace express. And then here we're going to type our interface request. And what this will allow us to do is actually add things to the request object. All of my Mongo functions, the six Mongo functions, except for the delete, are gonna return some sort of document or array of documents. So I have to here define some variables for me to work with depending on the function that I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my Mongo get. I'm gonna create a variable and make that equal to a document or undefined. So basically now I can access it directly from my request object and you're gonna see how we do that inside of our books controller when we're actually accessing the information from the decorator. 
Next, I'm going to add my get all, and that's simply going to be a document array. I don't have to add undefined here because I could just initialize the array as empty. My Mongo create and my Mongo update are going to be similar to my Mongo get. They're both going to be document or undefined. And then my Mongo query is going to be the same as my Mongo get all, and that's going to be an array of documents. Now inside of my declare handler, I simply have to declare all of these initialized variables. So my create, update, and get are going to be undefined. And my get all and my query are going to be empty arrays. If I don't do this and inject this into each of my requests, I'm going to get errors when I try to actually use the request object in other functions. So we have to give them initial values. Now inside of my server.ts folder, all I have to do is add this declare handler. I'm going to do it after we connect to Mongo because I think that makes sense in the order of operations. So in my login and configuration section here, I'm just going to do application.use and I'm going to look for my declare handler and insert it here. And that's all I have to do. Now every single request is going to have these variables available. So if I go to my books controller, you can see now my request object has my mongo.get. So I'm going to actually just add in all of these functions and appropriately line them up with the functions that I've created. So I'll have my mongo get all, mongo get, mongo create, etc. For my mongo create route, I'm actually going to change this to a 201. If you want, you can update the status to 201 for the update route as well. Now that we have our books controller set up with all of our variables, it's time to create our Mongo decorators. I'm going to start with the get all decorator. We're going to create a decorator for each one of these six routes. And then once we've done that, you can use them inside of your models over and over again. A lot of these decorators are going to look very similar. So I'm going to create the first one and then there's going to be a lot of copy pasta with some alterations. So just make sure that you follow along. Create a new folder inside of your decorators folder and call it mongoose. Inside of it, create a get all.ts file. At the top, import request, response, and next function from Express, and import model from Mongoose. Our decorator is going to be an export function. We're going to call it Mongo get all. It's going to take a model, and that's going to be of type model. And a generic type can just be any for now. And this is going to return a function. And our decorator has to have a target of type any, a property key of type string, and a descriptor of type property descriptor. On the inside, you're going to make a const original method equal to the descriptor.value. You're going to return the descriptor at the bottom. Then in the middle of your function, make your descriptor.value equal to an async function that is just an express middleware, your request, response, and next function object. And then inside here is where we're going to edit what happens to our function before the main function is actually called. So it's acting like middleware, but it's a decorator instead. Inside of this function, you can return the original method dot call, pass in this, and then the request, response, and next objects. And then above that is where we're going to throw our try catch block, do our get all, and check for any errors. Now, because our model can be equal to any model at this moment, it's not going to be super type safe. So a lot of these functions, I'm just going to be giving you from memory, but all of these functions are what you would actually be calling on your book model. So inside your try catch, we're going to do a const documents equals await model.find as a function. And then all you have to do is set your request.mongo get all equal to the documents. Inside of your error block, just do a logging error and the error, and then just return a response status of 500 or 404 or whatever you want. That way, if there's an error, you can just exit out and not continue down the decorator path and then add the JSON error to the status of 500. Now we're ready to actually implement this into our controller. So underneath your route get get all, you're gonna insert this decorator because as far as altering the function, the decorators will execute an order. So put your Mongo get all, and then all you have to do is pass in your book model. 
And then this function will run this before it gets to the return status of 200 that you see on here. And your Mongo get all should be filled out properly. So this is all we have to do for this first decorator. And this is gonna be our template for the other five decorators that we have to create. So let's just quickly test this by turning on NodeMon and adding our books controller to our server.ts file and then calling one of these predefined routes that we have created to see if it actually works. We're not gonna get any documents right now, but let's just make sure there's no errors. So inside of Postman here, I'm gonna do an HTTP, localhost 1337, books get all, and you can see that I've returned an empty array. Everything seems to be looking good here. So now we're gonna copy the get all decorator and create the get decorator. What we're gonna do here, instead of doing a model.find, we're gonna do a model.findById and pass in the request.params.id, which is part of the definition of this route, the colon ID corresponds to this variable. And then instead of getting those documents, what we're gonna do is we're going to change this to a document and check to see if it exists. If it does, we're gonna make our request.mongoget equal to that document. And then if it doesn't exist, we're going to simply put a response of status uh, 404, pass in some JSON and says it's not found. And then all we have to do inside of our books controller is pass in our Mongo get, pass in our book model, and then this route is now finished as well. We can't really test this route because there's no documents in our books collection yet to actually look at. So we're gonna have to create the create section of Mongo and we're gonna make that decorator right now. So how this decorator works is after you've renamed it, inside of the try block, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a const document equal to a new model, and inside of that, pass in an object where your underscore ID is equal to a new mongoose.types.objectID as a function, and then simply use the spread operator on your request.body as we assume that the body has everything we need for this document. You can add validation to this later, but for the sake of keeping this simple, we're just gonna pass in the body here with no validation. Afterwards, you're gonna do an await document.save as a function, and then pass this document to your request.mongo.create. And then once you've done that, this decorator is finished, and we can actually add it to the controller. So let's do that by adding the mongo.create underneath the post route definition and pass in our book. And since we already have the request.mongo.create inside of our response.status, we can actually create one now and test out the other two functions we've already created. So back inside of Postman, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my route here. I'm gonna change this to a post and change this to a books create. And then I'm gonna go to the body and add some raw content as JSON. And let's just make sure that our Mongo validation on the Mongo side is actually working because we did add the proper field. So let's do a name instead of a title. We'll call this Bubba's book and then add the author of Bubba. And when we hit send, this actually should fail because name isn't the title. And you can see that it does fail. So let's go ahead and just change that to title. And now you can see that it returns the object that it's created for us. So that's pretty awesome. And then you can see that if you try it again, there's a 500 server error. And it's just giving you this little message. This is Mongoose's way of telling you that this title already exists. And now if you head back to the other tab and you try the books get all route again, it should return you an array and the single entry should be the book that you just created. Duplicate this route and then instead of doing books get all, do a books get and then pass in the Mongo ID that you copied from the previous page. And you should see that it returns a single document that is also your book. So these three routes seem to be working properly. Let's move on to the last three decorators. So the next one we're gonna create is the Mongo query decorator. Go ahead and copy your get all decorator and we only have to modify this one slightly. Once you've changed the name at the top, all you really have to do with this one is inside of the model.find, pass in an object using the spread operator and pass in the request.body. This means that you can query using any of the parameters that your object might have or your model might have, whatever you want, depending on what the situation is with your model. After you pass in the request.body, make sure you change the request.mongo.getAll to the, your Mongo query, so you save this to the correct variable. Back inside of your controllers, go ahead and add the Mongo query decorator to your route, pass in the book model, and then this function is all finished. 
If you want to query inside of Postman to test it, I recommend you do it now. Uh, here you could just do a books query with a post root and you could just pass in whatever you want. I'm going to just test by the title here and see if it picks up my book and it does. And if I change the title to something that doesn't exist, you can see that it doesn't return anything. So this function is now working properly as well. Next, we're going to copy our get decorator and we're going to create our update decorator. Go ahead and change the name of this to Mongo update. And then we're going to make some modifications as follows. First, we're going to check to see if this doesn't return a document, just return a 404 of status not found. And if we do have it, we're going to do a document.set, pass in the body like we have been before. Then we're going to await a document.save, and this will apply the changes that we create from our new parameters inside of the body. Finally, set your request.mongo-update equal to this document. Back inside your controller, go ahead and add this decorator to the update ID route, which is our patch route, and pass in your book model to complete this route. If you want to go ahead and test the patch route here inside of Postman, this is where you can do it by copying the ID of the book that you have, duplicate one of your tabs, change it to a patch and do a books slash update and then pass in the ID. And then here we're just going to change the title to something else. I'm just going to add the word cool to the title, go ahead and send it. And you can see that it updates and saves the document properly. Finally, we can go ahead and copy our get decorator one more time and create our delete decorator from it. This one's going to be a little bit different here. We're going to find one and delete, and we're going to pass in some parameters to check for. And inside the object, we're going to do an underscore ID is equal to our request dot params dot ID. Here, we're going to check to see if there's no document, just return a status of 404. And then that's it. Because once this decorator completes, we'll know that the object has been deleted if we make it to this function. So just add the decorator Mongo delete to your function. And this finishes this last one off. So again, one more time, we can go to postman and check to see if we can delete this. So let's copy our ID, make a new tab and change this to a delete route and do a books slash delete slash our Mongo ID. And you can see that the message says it's deleted. So now if we check to get all, you'll see that this returns nothing now. So these are the six basic decorators for your Mongo functions are now all created. So basically whatever models you create, you can just copy and paste this controller over and over again and just pass in a different model. You can even create some sort of generic class out of this and make it even more generic than we've already made it. But you can see how easy it is to use decorators stacked on top of one another to execute these properly and efficiently without reusing the same code over and over again. And finally, this is what the decorator looks like in middleware form. So you can see that it looks just like any other piece of middleware that you would make. The only difference being is how you define your routes in your server file. Instead of using decorators and some sort of model like I have, you're simply declaring your you know, router or application.get or .post and then passing in all of the args that you please. So again, this is how you create all of the Mongo functions using decorators. I find it to be a lot more efficient because I don't have to copy and paste my code over and over again. The only thing I have to work with is my controller and I have a lot of autonomy when it comes to editing things in one place and not having to worry about changing them over and over again. If you know Mongo decides to update the way they do things and Mongoose has to change, I only have to change it in one spot. So I highly recommend doing this with your code, abstracting it in a way where you only have to change things in one place. That way, updating things won't be a pain and everything will be used the same. And you can expect similar results with different models, knowing that you execute them all in the exact same manner. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning back in. If you have any questions, please post them below and we'll see you in the next one.